How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Madison Angling. I'm Noah. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and watching it. I really appreciate it. My channel wouldn't be anything without you guys. So I just wanna say thank you to everybody who watches these videos. Be sure to like and comment too. If you like this video, hit the like. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down. And if you have something to add, share it down below. I love comments, guys. So thank you all for engaging here. So on today's video, we are talking about flies for walleyes. You heard that right, flies. There's a boat going by staring at me like a weirdo because I'm a weirdo and I'm sitting here by myself talking at a camera. It's a weekend. I'm on the Wisconsin River, guys. I'm up here at the Dells. Just finished up a guide trip and wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you guys about pulling flies for walleyes, more specifically fishing here on the Wisconsin River. So pulling flies is something that's been around for a long, long time. And I'm using the term fly very loosely, okay? It, it is by definition a fly, right? It's a hook dressed up with some kind of feather or hair. In this case, it's bucktail, a little bit of flashaboo and it's an incredibly effective technique for catching walleyes. So this more or less started up on the upper lakes chain of the Winnebago system, Poygan, Butamort, Winnicani, up on the Wolf River and the Fox River. And basically it's substituting a live minnow for a bucktail fly on a three-way rig, which if you guys missed, or you probably didn't if you clicked on this video, I did a video about two weeks ago uh, showcasing three-way rigs, kind of how I like to set them up and how I like to use them here on the Wisconsin River for spring walleyes. So essentially, the rig is exactly the same. The only thing we're changing is the fact that we're not using live bait, we're using flies. So I already know some of you Winnebago boys are gonna get on my case about this because the way I'm gonna show you that I like to rig these up is not the way that you do it on the Winnebago system, okay? This is how I like to use this on the Wisconsin River. So if you guys are interested, if you guys didn't already see my three-way video from a couple weeks ago, I'm gonna have that linked in the description. Go back and check that out. But I'm gonna give you guys just a quick and dirty rundown uh, for those of you who maybe didn't watch it. So uh, my rod, I like a 7.3 medium light. This is a Fox River Rods, 7.3 medium light. Uh, I've got eight pound fluoro for my main line. I like a 25 or 30 size spinning reel. This happens to be an Okuma Epixer. This is a great budget reel. And the, uh, the business end here, I'm running a three-way swivel. In fact, it is a size, size four. There you go, guys, I figured it out. It's a size four. My last video, uh, I had some people reach out and were like, what size swivels are you using? I don't know, whatever looks appropriate. So a size four swivel. I do about a 12 inch dropper from my three-way swivel down to my weight. I use these pencil weights. You can use all kinds of different weights, but I like these pencil weights. And you can see I like to use a snap so I can switch my weights out on the fly. It makes it really quick and easy to adjust based on the current and kind of what's going on on that given day. For my leader on this one, I've got about a four foot leader. This is 10 pound monofilament. That is super important, guys. When you're running these, run mono. I know floral makes a little bit more sense in your head, but uh, we'll get into that in just a second, but the 10 pound mono leader is very, very important. Now, I already know someone's gonna be like, why aren't you using braid? Because I like the stretch of fluorocarbon because it delays my hook set a little bit, especially in cold water. Now, if you're up on the Winnebago chain, you're probably gonna use braid. You're gonna use a shorter rod. You're probably gonna run a few or at least a couple flies on your on your rig. And typically you're gonna use a lot more weight. You're fishing deeper. So I are, and, and more current. If you fish the Wolf River, you know what the current's like up there. So yes, my rig is different, but this is a very similar rig to what guys are using on the Rock River as well. And this works really well for me here on the Wisconsin River. All right, so we got our weight. We got our three-way swivel, size four, in case anyone was wondering. 10 pound mono, I like the XL or the XT trialine. It's a good standby, works great. Let's talk about flies, all right? So I already kind of showed you guys some flies. If you're wondering what color I really like up here on the river, <laughs> it's pink and purple. Now in the past, I did a video a few years ago uh, doing kind of a quick and dirty fly rigging video. It kind of sucked, I'm the first to admit that. So that's why I wanted to redo it here. Um, I used to sell these. I don't have time to tie these anymore, unfortunately. So I'm sorry. I know there are a handful of people that reached out this spring wanting flies. I can't do it. I just don't have time, I'm sorry. But if you guys are looking for flies, especially in the Madison area, head over to DNS Bait Tackle Fly Shop. They are going to be stocked up, ready to roll with walleye flies. In fact, I'm actually gonna be rolling in there and showing those guys how I like to tie my flies. So we'll have basically my flies there as well as a variety of others. They'll get you all set up if you need flies. So as far as uh, the rig goes, the one that I have tied up here um, just has one fly on it, right? Pink and purple, a little bit of flashaboo in there. I just have one fly on here. Now what's cool is you can actually run multiple flies. You can even run up to three, right? So you're allowed three lines per person in Wisconsin, which means 
three individual fish catching com components of your rig total. So if I really wanted to, I could run three flies on one rig, but that is my my max. I can't run another rod. I can't have a three-way sitting in a rod holder. I get these three, okay? So you could do that, like fishing today by myself right now, right? I could put a three-way out with just a, a single hook on it and a minnow, let that chill in a rod holder, and then I could pump this double fly rig, okay? That's legal. If I had three flies on here and a three-way sitting in a rod holder, that is illegal. Three, one, two, three in Wisconsin, okay? So obviously I got two flies on this one. My, rate, my leader got a little goofy here shouldn't look like that. I had it shoved in my glove box, but I have a fly on the end here and I have another fly, I don't know, about 15, 16 inches above it. Uh, you can absolutely run flies in, in tandem to, with each other. And what's cool is you can actually kind of nail down what color they want on a given day. That's another really good one. Black and Char, that's another good color up here. But I typically like to space them out about 15, 16 inches away from each other. That way they're not tangling. Do you ever catch two fish at the same time? Yes, sometimes you do. Um, it's it's not common but it can definitely happen so uh as far as flies go um again they're very very simple there's so many different ways you can tie them uh and in fact if you're interested in learning how to tie flies this is a great way to learn how to do it all you need to do is go pick up some number two arborine hooks you know we got the gold arborine hook a couple colors of bucktail some thread and you're good to go a little super glue send it you can make these things super easy super cheap What's also nice about fishing flies is you're not using live bait, right? So if you miss a fish, uh, all you have to do is keep fishing. A lot of times that fish will either come back or its buddy is gonna swing in and grab that fly. So if you ever swing and miss or lose a fish, you don't have to reel in and check your bait. You just keep fishing it. Pretty darn cool system. So uh, especially if you're going through a lot of bait, if you're catching tons of fish and they're very, very active, switch from minnows over to flies. Oftentimes, if you're catching them on minnows, you're gonna catch them on flies. Now, the water temp today is about 35 degrees, which is pretty cold. I did fish flies for a while today. Caught a few fish, but the minnow on the three-way absolutely smashed today. The flies, not so much. I wanted to catch some fish on flies for you guys. I might try, I might have that at the end of the video here, but today was more of a minnow day, so I'm not gonna try to force a bite to happen just for the sake of getting it on camera. All right, so. This is kind of a weird angle. I'm out by myself right now. I just dropped my customers off, but this is how I like to fish these. So always fishing down current, working your way up. Don't cast these up current and bring them down. They're gonna be a tangled mess. You're gonna get snagged. It's no good, okay? But the way I like to fish these is I'll cast them out into the current. I'm either in direct current, that's kind of a moderate to low flow, or I'm right on a current seam, right next to really fast current and dead water. So in this case, I'm actually on a current seam. I'm in about 14, 15 feet of water here, and there should be some fish here. There were, <laughs> there's a fish. Uh, there were some fish here earlier. But the way that I like to fish these is, is very similar to a jig, okay? The flies don't really do a whole lot down there. They just kind of hang. Now, every day is different, okay? There's days when you can come out here and you just let them hang, you don't do anything, and they eat it. There's other days when they want it moving, okay? So when you go up towards, you know, the Fox River, Oshkosh area, you'll see guys actually pumping flies, okay? Pumping flies and pulling flies, if you will. So what they're doing is they're kind of actively cruising along. Typically, they're working up current, they're working up river, and they're pumping the flies as they go, all right? And sometimes you'll feel the smack and you set the hook, or when you go to pump, it'll just be heavy and you have a fish. So that's kind of how I like to fish these. I just give them little pops every once in a while, very similar to jigging. Just let it hang in the current, let that fly kind of wander around down there and kind of cover water for you. And just give it little pops every once in a while. The hook set is very much the same as any other three-way rig like I have in that previous video, which I have linked down below, where I kind of want to reel into them and lean into them at the same time. I don't want to snap it really hard like you would with a jig. I want them to kind of just ease into it. And it seems like the hooking percentage is a lot better when you do it that way. So another thing, I know I'm dumping tons of info on you here, but that mono leader is super important because mono floats. I want this fly to sit up off the bottom. Now these flies, depending on how they're tied, uh, the ones that I tie are about neutrally buoyant. And that's kind of by design. I want them to be as close to neutrally buoyant as possible. It kind of gives them a really nice action. And now I'm kind of depending on my leader, my 10 pound mono, to float those flies up off the bottom. And, and it seems like the combination of having the right amount of hair on a neutrally buoyant fly with the 10 pound mono, the float, the buoyancy of the 10 pound mono leader uh, gets it just perfectly about a foot off the bottom, right in their face. 
So mono is really, really important here. We don't want fluoro. We don't want that thing to sink and get snagged, right? And if you've spent any time on the Wisconsin River at all, you know how snaggy it is. So having that 10 pound mono leader is super important. So just kind of light little pops every once in a while. Otherwise, we're just letting that fly sit down there and do its thing totally on its own. And uh, it's, it's pretty wild, honestly. Sometimes you can throw this on a rod holder and they smack them. It's pretty, pretty cool. Well guys, I've been fishing here for probably 15 minutes or so. Um, I did catch a couple fish on a cheater rod. I put a three-way down with a minnow, but I just cannot get them to eat the flies today. And like I mentioned earlier, the water's cold today. We're hovering in that 34 to almost 35 degree range, which is pretty cold. So for me, when it's that cold, minnows are kind of the go-to. Uh, the flies can work in really cold water. However, it does seem like once you get to that 37 degrees and above, the flies really, really start to take off. And that seems like the case with, with pretty much all these presentations, right? The fish just get more aggressive as well as more fish kind of moving up river. So no, today wasn't a great day to get fish on flies, but I at least wanted to give a quick breakdown on what they are, kind of, kind of the story on flies and uh, at least give you a little crash course on how to use these. So if you guys come up here, you know, I'm up at the Wisconsin Dallas today, you can do this at Sauk, you can do this on Petenwell, Castle Rock, you can do this on the Rock River, pretty much anywhere there's walleyes in the spring, you can pull flies. Uh, even on the Green Bay tributaries, guys, Peshtigo, Marinette, all those places, Okano, you can go out and pull flies and, and catch fish in the river. So if you're looking for something different to try this spring that, you know, maybe the fish haven't seen before or just another technique to keep in your back pocket if things aren't going well with your other uh, techniques, give the flies a try. You know, they're cheap. If you want to go pick them up at DNS, they're really inexpensive. All the components are inexpensive if you want to go make them yourself. And uh, we might even do a fly tying video here in the next couple weeks. I'll show you guys how I like to tie my flies, maybe. So anyway, guys, I can't catch fish on flies today. I suck. But I figured I'd at least give this opportunity to, uh, to share with you guys how I like to set these up and uh, kind of the, the quick and dirty on how to do it. So with that being said, guys, drop some comments below. What are some more things you guys would like to learn more about? It doesn't have to be walleyes. It could be bass, panfish, muskies, whatever you guys want to talk about. But keep these shop talk videos coming. It's been a lot of fun making these. I love the comments. I love the feedback. And maybe share if you guys fish flies, and especially if you fish them on the Wisconsin River here, share below, share some of your tips if you want to. Don't, don't give away all your secrets, but share a few tips here. Or if you see something that I'm doing that's maybe a little weird or you do it differently, share that, share it below. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna, treat, <laughs> I'm gonna keep trying to maybe catch a fish on a fly right here. It's probably not gonna happen. But with that, I will see you guys on the next video. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this spring weather and uh, taking advantage of it. Get the boats out, even if you don't have a boat, find somebody that does, get out here, come catch some walleyes and have some fun. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.